Hey everyone, my name is Brian Keller, and today I'll be discussing our newest paper in current biology entitled Map-like Use of Earth's Magnetic Field in Sharks. So how do marine migrants navigate? The Earth's magnetic field is pretty much the only constant and ubiquitous navigational aid that's available to them. Magnetic based navigation is pretty common amongst marine migrants, uh, and there's substantial evidence that elasmobranchs are sensitive to geomagnetic fields. But until now, it's been unresolved if sharks use this ability for orientation and navigation. This is a really interesting question because sharks routinely undergo long distance migrations between the same locations. So our team wanted to assess if they use the Earth's magnetic field as navigation aid. Here's what the Earth's magnetic field looks like. The color represents the strength or intensity, and the contours represent the inclination or angle of the field. The magnetic field varies predictably and on a gradient. So together, those factors can be really useful um, for animals formulating a magnetic map and can assist them with navigation. In order to answer our questions, we need a model species. And that's where the bonnet head comes into play. The bonnet head actually exhibits site fidelity. So they return to the same estuaries on a seasonal basis. And this is important because it shows that the sharks have a preferred habitat and they're capable of successfully navigating back to that location. So our two research questions are, number one, can bonnet heads orient in unique geomagnetic fields? Um, and this basically, you know, can the sharks use the magnetic field while they're migrating to orient towards their target location, towards their home? And two, how would this ability affect the genetic diversity of the species? To test our theory, we used magnetic displacements, uh, which is a method where animals are exposed to unique magnetic fields in a merit coil. Here we are in the merit coil system. You can see that the horizontal and the vertical frames of this system are wrapped in copper wire. The entire cube itself has about 10,000 feet of wire wrapped all around in a very specific manner. When you run current through frames like this that are wrapped in copper wire, a magnetic field is going to be created at the center of the system. When you change the power supply to the cables, you can change the magnetic fields within the cube to represent different locations. These were the three treatments that we exposed the sharks to for our experiment. So the control treatment represents the location where the sharks were captured. And then 600 kilometers north and south, we have the northern and southern treatments. Obviously, the sharks had never visited Tennessee, at least we hope not. Um, but we were curious if the animals were capable of extrapolating information to a unique environment that they had never visited. Here's an overview of one of our trials. We use tracking software and circular statistics to determine the mean swimming angle of each shark per trial. And that gave us rose diagrams, which you see here. Um, so each dot represents the average angle of each animal per treatment. For the northern here and the control here treatments, there is no statistically significant uh, heading, which you can see here. Um, the p values are listed here. But for the southern treatment, we actually did have a statistically significant heading. Um, which was in the northern direction about 347 degrees which is pretty exciting because that means the animals are using the unique magnetic field at this location to orient towards their target location you know we didn't expect to see a uh, statistically significant heading here because the animals were already in their target location they had nowhere to go we weren't too surprised by the northern treatment for sea turtles it's been documented that when exposed to fields outside of their range they fail to respond in a uniform manner for our second research question, we analyzed nuclear and mitochondrial DNA of the bonded head from throughout the Northwest Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we found that magnetic differences account for more variation in mitochondrial DNA than temperature differences or coastal distance. But in nuclear DNA, a similar amount of variation was explained by each of these variables. We found that bonded heads are capable of orienting to unique magnetic fields. And what's exciting is that upon displacement, they orient towards target locations or homeward orientation in biologically relevant fields. Um, this provides clarity for how sharks may successfully navigate between distant locations. The white shark, for example, migrates between South Africa and Australia, covering over 20,000 kilometers a year. Um, how do they manage to get back to the exact same spot swimming in such straight lines? It's likely that they're using the Earth's magnetic field as a navigational aid. Finally, our genetic analysis provides insight into how stocks may remain distinct despite a lack of barriers. And this is caused by animals potentially selecting habitats based on magnetic cues. Thanks for listening, and a special thanks to my co-authors, the Save Our Seas Foundation for providing support, 
and all of the staff and volunteers at the FSU Marine Lab.